Welcome back to The Line. Early in February, The Line talked about an amendment that would take away some of the power of the governor to appoint university regions and make it more bipartisan. That amendment failed, but regions at New Mexico State University and the University of New Mexico are again in the news. Governor Martinez granted new recess appointments to two UNM regents who have yet to be formally confirmed by the legislature. But she has yet to fill the position recently vacated by Alex Romero, but only served since May. And during the recent session, 43 legislators signed a letter calling for the resignation of the entire Board of Regents at NMSU after the Regents moved to limit the hiring authority of outgoing Chancellor Gary Carruthers. And Tom, region boards have in, in New Mexico have kind of under scrutiny. Uh, we talked about it here. You were here, that we, you know, the idea of, the, of, of kind of taking some of that power away from uh, the governor. Is it still too politicized in your view? Is that is that what's really mm -hmm. it's politicized and it's very dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. right? When you have the governor uh, who isn't commenting on you know the appointment process, you have Senator Lopez who oversees Rules Committee, right. who's the other side of that, not commenting on the process. Uh, you have a year ago with the uh, uh, higher education funding being vetoed altogether. That's right. And now you have you know the regents basically they're like little. Uh, you know, fiefdoms, mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, tremendously dysfunctional. And by the way, uh, welcome uh, President Garnett Stokes yes. uh, to your new position on March 1st. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, you know, Martha, when you think about it, it, it's a pretty plumb position. And a lot of folks out there have really, you know, they want to be a Board of Regents. It's kind of a big deal. And we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, the setup of colleges in our state and whether one board should oversee all of them or have this individual kind of a situation. But can you see any resolution coming in how we have it set up now? And this was the point of what they were trying to do in the legislature uh, this past session. Like, this is going to keep going like this forever because you have personalities involved. And this communication issue is certainly not working. Well, and you have such a power struggle here. Right. There are 85 appointees that are awaiting confirmation in the Senate Rules Committee. That's right. That's and right. they're not all regents, obviously. That's right. it, it's just a power struggle. Mm -hmm. They don't want to approve anything the Democrats don't that uh, Martinez is doing mm -hmm. uh, in terms of these appointments. She's made some bad ones. Uh, we all know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she, in turn, is retaliating. I don't know if you saw it. It was a very small uh, piece that she uh, did not, she vetoed their funding. Yes. The Rules Committee funding. That's right. Uh, for the coming year. So are we stuck with it at least for the coming year? Right. Absolutely. Right. And uh, down in NMSU, mm -hmm. I think they've pulled a Merrick Garland uh, thing down there and said, right. well, we're going to wait for the next <clears throat> chancellor. Right. Uh, probably, probably. They have the authority to do that. They assert that they do, right. but is it really uh, ethically correct to do that? Uh, mm -hmm. At what point do you cut off the power of someone who's going out, as they did with Obama and the court appointments? Right. Is it going to be a year? Is it going to be two years? Is it going to be they can never do it? That's right. That's a, that's a tough one. And the uh, idea, Stephen, that the pushback was, well, this affects recruitment. The next chancellor is going to look at this and go, now, wait a minute now. <laughs> you know, I'm the chancellor until this date, but I guess I'm not really. I mean, you know the what whole I mean? So, back right. and forth down there is, is uh, weird. Right. I mean, we have Gary Carruthers, a former Republican governor, right. who there was a back and forth. It turned out that he wanted to stay on. Mm -hmm. And he's gotten great reviews, I think, from almost everyone, mm -hmm. except the border regions at New Mexico State mm -hmm. right. said that they didn't want him to stay. But taking the other side of that, though, is it not unreasonable for the board to say, look, sometimes things happen when someone has the power to give lifetime appointments. And maybe stepping in front of that maybe is not such a bad thing because that's, that can be abused. Not saying that about former Governor Carruthers, but you see where I'm going here. That, that well, looking out for the best the interests is, of the university. The question is, was that going on? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it would, he wouldn't be the, so, so they didn't say they would keep him on, the regents. Right. And so he's leaving July 1st. So right. did the regents get some kind of word that he was trying to hire people that was my thought as well. or to give people, loyal people, pe maybe people he thinks that are really good, right. long-term contracts. And is that why the regents did it? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. Senator Papin's letter says it was totally unnecessary. Right. So she seems to be saying, no, there was no reason to do it. But, you know, mm -hmm. one of the big problems with both UNM and New Mexico State regents is it's completely opaque. 
You know, we're taxpayers. We have no idea what's That's going right. on, what the so-called problems are, why the UNM regions are talking to one another, one another, why they're not meeting. We we can't figure this out. That's right. Well, they're saying they're not communicating, and but they don't say on what. Uh, they don't say on what, That's exactly. Right. You know, and Stephanie, when you think about it, there's been issues like even just simple Robert's rules have not been, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean, about, you know, who needs to be I mean, there, who's not there, what just simple, the simple things, exactly. Well, and I think it comes down to what, you know, are the role of the regions. What is their jurisdiction? Right. What level of transparency do we expect? What sort yeah. of accountability and mechanisms for those checks and balances exist? Mm -hmm. And I will say, I do think the Senate, you know, so there's that. Then there's also this question about the process of Senate confirmations and the relationship between the Senate Rules Chair, uh, Senator Linda Lopez, and <clears throat> and the executive. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, I think a really important check and balance. And I will also say, you know, that tension existed even under Richardson, I think under sure. a lot of governors. Sure. So, you know, that's not new to um, Governor Martinez, that's though right. I don't think I've ever heard of one specific committee being sure. not funded during the legislative But you think about Alex Romero, he's, he's a pretty, talent, funded, pretty so, talented guy. So she's mm -hmm. complaining that yeah. they're not giving uh, appointments, they're not vetting the appointments, right. but she's vetoed the interim funding, so that's right. they can't go right. out and that's actually right. do the thing that she wants them to do. It, it mm -hmm. actually makes no sense And there are proposals. They weren't I do meeting. think they weren't meeting. there that's are, right. there are right. options. I'm not sure if the mm -hmm. amendment that you all discussed early in February was mm -hmm. the so, um, Senate Joint Resolution 1. Yep. That's sponsored right. by Steinborn, and I think establishing another sort of body to provide input and another check and balance to sort of neutralize or and candidates um, and well. candidates yeah. exactly to right. um, not give any one branch too much power and That's to right. really provide some external input yep. and um, and accountability. That's right. I'm gonna steal another thirty seconds of you, Tom. Alex Romero is starting to say he's a pretty talented guy. You know, and to see him walk out of that thing, that's, that's pretty eye-opening for a lot of people. You yeah, know? and uh, but yeah, I mean, Alex Romero, very well respected in the community, mm -hmm. uh, has done uh, fantastic things, uh, and to have him get up and walk out, right? I mean, it has to be pretty dysfunctional for that to happen. Right. So, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, hopefully at some point in time things will get worked out, but in the short term, I think it's just going to be continued chaos. Exactly right. We'll have to end that there.